I see you, I see you talk a lot about different business ideas and you had like a Twitter series that you're doing or some type of, I don't think it was a thread. I think it's like multiple posts where you're like different business ideas that I've pursued. And one thing that I've caught on to, and I'm wondering if you're the same way is it's not just like about making money or making a profitable business. It's almost like, what's the best way to do it? Cause I'm sure like with all the different things you've done and the different things you get to see and just with the natural curious mind that you have, it's really not, I mean, I'm assuming it's not like, Hey, is this profitable? Hey, could I make money doing this? It's like, what's the highest value use for my time? Like not all dollars are created equal just because you can make 200 grand a year or whatever the number is, pick a number doing this one business. It might be a miserable business to do. Do you think through that stuff in high grade ideas or you're just like, Hey, I like this. I'm going to go for it. But like, how do you, I guess, how do you filter that stuff? I do now. It took me 15 years to learn that lesson, but my framework used to be, will this idea work? If so, launch. And now my framework is, is this the idea that I should pick? And nowadays I pick ideas that can quickly cash flow with minimal investment. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's not. Like I don't care about equity. I don't care about building a billion dollar business. I want businesses that are employee light, operational light, and cash flow heavy, like within 30 or 60 days. And so if that's a porta potty rental business, if that's a, a restaurant, it doesn't like, I don't care about the industry. I just love business. I love P and L's. I love buying for dollar and selling for two, but I, with all the ideas in front of me, literally spreadsheets full of ideas. I try to only pick the ones that are, that I should start. Cause I think basically any, I, any business idea could work anything. If you get the right distribution, the right influencer, the right ad spend, even dumb ideas could work. But is that the idea that you should spend your, your valuable time on? Well, the other thing is too, is it's like, it's a commitment. Like earlier you kind of said, well, if something's not working or if I don't, if I don't like it, I'll spend less time on it. But what I found is that even the stuff that's not working, you're kind of like stuck in it for some period of time. I mean, not always there's certain things if it's, you know, there's not a lot of inventory or there's no debt or there's whatever, you can just kind of turn it off if it's not working. But other businesses, I mean, I think people seriously underestimate, like you're doing this and now you're in. So like, you, you got to see it through to the end, especially if there's debt, especially if there's investors, but just talk about how you, do you view like that commitment aspect of this? Like how hard would this be to, to unwind if it doesn't go right? Absolutely. Yeah. When I refer to things just kind of falling away naturally, <clears throat> Those aren't businesses. Those are projects, something I'm testing, looking for traction on. But you're absolutely right. When it comes to investors and employees, you're in a whole nother ball game. So four years ago, a partner and I launched a business called Send Eats. And the thesis was very simple, was COVID hit. There's a lot more e-commerce brands because of COVID. And we need third parties to fulfill those e-commerce orders more than ever. There's a, the market just grew a ton overnight for this. And within that market, there, there was very little competition of companies shipping food, like regional food brands, um, via e-commerce. So we started sendeats.com and the thesis was sound. There was a market for it. It was a growing market. There weren't a lot of competitors, but it was such a hard business and we got years into it just beating our head against the wall. And this is an argument for shiny object sy syndrome, because I certainly see the argument against it. I, I understand focus. I see why it's valuable, but we were just heads down in this business thinking, all right, how can we get our net margins from four to 5%? How can we do this? How can we've got a lease, we've got employees. When really the question was, should have been, how can we wind this down respectfully to focus on something better? Because Right. Opportunity cost is extremely expensive. And so we did like we, we canceled our lease early. That was painful. We had to let go of our employees. We fired our customers proactively and we completely pivoted to a different e-commerce brand. And it was the best thing we could have done. And we should have done it one to two years earlier, but you're right. Like that was not something that just kind of fell off because we were busy. We had, it was a lot of pain, um, a lot of heartburn to rewind that.